let's build an agent together. I'm going to go through a really common scenario here, which is an agent that can help your employees understand policies and answer questions. We're going to go through this step by step, but I'm going to explain the what and the why of what we're doing so you can tweak this and apply it to your particular scenario. What we're building here is an agent in the Microsoft 365 Copilot chat experience. So this is where my starting point is. And over here, I can click on this button that says create an agent. Now, when we're creating an agent here, what we can do is provide it with a description, which is essentially its purpose. What is its reason for being in this case to answer questions about policies, as well as instructions, which are like guardrails about how it should behave and what it should do in terms of responding to users and what it should not do and what types of things it's going to use for its knowledge, in this case, the policy document. So what we have on the screen here as a starting point is a natural language experience to build this. So you can start by just describing what it is you want in natural language. So these are some of the pre-built ones. If you want to have a play around with those, those are always good ways of learning. I'm a big fan of using templates for learning but we're building this one out first. Hi, I'm here to help you describe what you want the agent to do. So you've got 2000 characters to play with here. You do not have to get this perfect, but the more you put in here, you'll see how it starts to break it out for you and build on what you put in here to save you having to think about everything later. So I would start with, this is a bit of a, uh, a way of putting it together. I would start with telling it what it is you're, what it is you're trying to build. So you are a policy helper agent. It will often pick up this language for the name. You can change the name later if you don't like that, but I'm willing to bet here doing this live that it will change the name to policy helper agent. That's fine. So now we want to think about what is it that its purpose is? Why does it exist? So you are able to help the user get answers to their questions about human resources policies. The other thing we can do with these types of instructions is to frame the agent with a persona of some kind. So in this case, this agent, we want it to act as if it's an expert in the human resources department who is across all of these policies. So whatever your scenario is, putting in this kind of persona can help. Now, as a little tip here, you can also use just the general co-pilot capabilities to ask it to help you with the wording of this. So that's a good thing to do. I'm going to use my human brain for this right now. So uh, you are an expert in human resources and you know everything about the policies of our organization in this area based on the documents provided. You will provide advice in an accurate, friendly and professional manner. Now, depending on what you're doing, obviously for this one, that's the right tone. If you're doing something a little bit more lighthearted or if you have corporate branding or tones of speech, you can start to incorporate that in here as well. Giving it some examples is also a really good way to help it understand the scope of what it's going to be able to do. You will be able to provide answers about leave, performance management, health and safety and other matters related to employee well-being and success at work. Good purpose, huh? <laughs> all right. I think that's probably about all we need. So once we've done that description, let's hit this little button here and see what it's going to do with that. It will come through with now sort of helping me to build it. So the first thing you'll see here, oh, lots of things happen on the screen. Great. Now let's determine a name. HR policy advisor. That's better than policy helper agent. I'm happy with that. So it's asking me if that's okay. So I'm going to say, yes, that sounds great. 
Giving AI good feedback also helps it to work with you. It's just a good habit to get into. I know a lot of people find that funny, but it's working with what you're giving it. So now let's refine the instructions. Before we come back to that, let's have a look at what happened on the right-hand side of the screen here. I'm just going to zoom this down a little bit so that we can see it all. So you'll see that it's put in the name. This agent is a policy helper, and you'll see it's starting to pick up on the words that I've given it. It's also giving me suggested prompts. Now you'll notice it's picked up on the things I asked about, leave policies, performance management, health and safety, employee well-being. I can change these later, but you see that the more that I'm putting in that description, it's starting to save me that work if I can do that. And it's starting to kind of flesh out that scenario. Uh, let's focus on what the agent should do. Could you provide more details on the specific tasks or actions? So I think what we want to do here is to say, please provide answers in a clear bullet point summary format and offer step-by-step -step guidance where it makes sense to do so. So this is where you can start to inform the type of responses that you want. Do we want long paragraphs? I find with these sort of generative answers type scenarios where it's drawing on the knowledge and bringing things back, the default is that it will tend to give you a lot of information. So asking it to give bullet points or to summarize. And again, you can refine this as much as you like, but think about the, the style and type of answer. But in scenarios I've worked with here, most organizations just like get to the, <laughs> get to the chase, give the user something short and use bullet points. Uh, it's all set up with initial instructions. Did you see that that refined, that refreshed a little bit while I was talking there? So it changed some of the terminology and just refreshed a little bit based on. So it's building this and refining it based on my instructions. How should the agent handle situations where it doesn't have enough information? So this is something where people often ask this, and this is an important thing you can do with an agent is, do you want it to use its general knowledge to answer the questions or not? Please only provide answers found in the knowledge provided. If you do not know the answer, please tell the user to contact their HR representative. So we don't want it to make up answers based on its general knowledge. And this is something that you can choose to do depending on your scenario. There are times when that's incredibly useful and times when it's absolutely not. So we are telling it, this is what you know and please only use that to answer. The next thing that we've got in here, there's another example here called configure. So you'll see what we've got here is HR policy advisor. I can change the name. So this has now taken all of the information that I gave it and put it into these pieces. As you get more experienced than this, you can, we've started with that natural language description, but you can actually just jump across straight into configure if you want to build it by putting the words in the right boxes, but you can see what it's done. There's an edit icon here, so I can change that icon if I want to do that can change the name. This is where we've got this description and you'll see that description is what sits here. Now, if this is too much, we can edit that down, but I've given it those words. I'm happy with that. And here are my instructions. Provide answers in a clear bullet point summary, step-by-step -step guidance, so you can see where it's got all of those things. Now, here is the next part that's important. We want to give it that knowledge, which is in this case, a SharePoint site that has all of those HR policies. So what we can do is come in here and either browse or enter the URL. If you've got that for your SharePoint site, I'm just going to come in here and click browse. I'm going to go into my human resources site here and you'll see this is the document library that has all of those things in it. So make sure you're pointing to that right place because that's what we want it to use. You'll see that I can keep going. I can add other SharePoint knowledge sites if I want to. This is this web search I don't want it to answer questions from websites. I only want it to use this knowledge. So we're going to leave that one switched off. Coming soon, you'll also be able to have it take action. For instance, send an email to someone or get information from another system. Stay tuned. When this little thing goes live, I will certainly be doing uh, content on it. And now here we've got these starter prompts. So these are the starter prompts that are here. I can come in and remove any of these things or change any of these things. But again, if I've been good with my wording, we should be good to go. 
Okay, now I'm going to click that create button and this will take a couple of seconds. While this is cooking up, let me know if you've got other scenarios you'd like me to work through in a video, pop them in the comments below or any other questions around any of this stuff. This area of building agents is absolutely sort of critical and changing the future of the way that we work, creating these experiences that are very zoned in to one particular use case is incredibly helpful instead of just having that big co-pilot that can answer everything this can help you get much more accurate answers by narrowing it down and we're going to see how we can use that so my agent was created successfully this is just for me right now but if I want to share this which I probably would with other people in my organization I can go in and, and make those changes and, and share it with other people for now I'm just going to go to the agent so that we can see how it works so what happens now is in my experience, this is my main co-pilot experience here. Let's just give this a refresh because we should be seeing those agents come up on the right hand side there and they're not. So we'll just uh, pull it back in and now we're good to go. So these are the different agents that I'm working with. This is my main Microsoft 365 co-pilot experience. If I ask a question about an HR policy here, it will find it, but it's looking across my entire work, all of my chats, all of my emails, everything. This Microsoft 365 Copilot is connected to everything. The agent that I've just created, let's come across here and switch across. Now I'm zoned in on that particular experience. If you don't have the full Microsoft 365 Copilot license, or if all of your users don't have that, you can create these agents and just share these agents. So this is a really good use case where you might not have Microsoft 365 Copilot across the entire organization, but you want an agent connected to that SharePoint site just for employees to be able to answer those questions every now and again, you can totally do that. It's a pay as you go model. If it's infrequently used, which something like this, you're gonna have a lot of people using it every now and again, that's a really good use case for that pay as you go model if you don't need that full license. Licensing is a whole other video. I, I, I think there are some requests for that. Let me know if you want to see that, but um, I'm just trying to stick to the tech here with this one. So let's give this a test. We've got these suggested prompts that were generated while we were going through. So let's give one of those a go. You'll see what that user experience is. Whatever you've put in those suggested prompts there means they can just do a single easy click of a button and they're going to come up with those answers. So it's worth thinking about what those suggested prompts are for those really super genuinely frequently asked questions. And you'll see when it comes back with the response, it's going to give us the reference to the policy documents that it's drawn it from. So you can see here we've got a few different things. There's a flexible working policy. We've got an equal opportunity policy. So there are four different documents and it's reasoned over all of those and pulled those together. This is a really good example of what you can do because it's drawing on lots of different pieces of information for the employee. You can also have this do something sort of, you know, straightforward in answering a specific question. What is our policy on compassionate leave? And it will actually direct question, direct answer, find a fact, how many days do I get, all of those kinds of things. Now, I mentioned earlier that you can, in near future state, create actions that could actually look up to a system. So if it was an employee querying, what's my current leave balance, then that's something you could actually do and go out into those systems. Oh, hello, try again. Let's, <laughs> let's click that and try again. I think my internet is a, a little bit uh, slow while I'm recording here. So this is now giving us that answer. Again, nice bullet points there, which is how I asked it to respond. And it's giving me that template, which is where that's come from. And I can go straight in there. Let's try something else. What if I have a problem with my manager? So this is something that's a very general question now. I'm not asking for a specific policy. I'm just sort of saying, here's a problem I've got. What should I do? So it's going to be able to interpret that and come through. And again, it's bringing through suggestions, nice bullet points of things that we can uh, that we can do in there. Now, I did also scope it down and say that you can't answer questions unrelated to this. Let's uh, just start a nice clean new chat here. Let's try something that it shouldn't answer. How do I make chocolate cake? This is always my favorite example to, um, to use and I've even misspelt it there. Now, oh no, it's not supposed to do that. It should just be sticking to the HR questions. 
If you want to go back and refine it or correct it, which honestly, realistically, you pretty much always will because we're in a bit of a testing phase here. The way that you can get back into it, this is a little bit counterintuitive. You actually need to go back into the create an agent experience. And then you've got the menu here for my agents. And now you'll find the ones that you've built. So we're going to go back into this HR policy advisor. Let's take a look at all of these things. Let's change this piece at the end. You should only answer questions based on the knowledge provided. If the user asks a question about anything where the answer is not in the knowledge, please say you can't help. Let's just leave it. Let's just leave it at that. Let's see what else is going on here in the settings. We'll scroll down. We've definitely got that web search off. Uh, and so we're good. Let's update that and see if that changes things. We'll give it a second to work through. The, working with instructions and the way that the agent works, this is not a precise science. Obviously, the better we get at this and the more we learn together about how to do these things, the more that we can do. But sometimes you have to tweak things and try different things and see what is going to get you the results that you want. All right, let's refresh that and go back into my HR policy advisor. How are we going to go this time? How do I make chocolate cake? Okay, now I can't chat about this. It, now it, it did it did come up with something and then sort of refresh and change, but you'll see now that it's not answering the question. So lessons here, please iterate, please try, uh, share things that you find that work because that makes a huge difference to everyone's experience because we are all learning in this area together. I'm going to make a heap more content on agents. So subscribe to the channel if you find this helpful and you would like more. Thanks for watching.